right! Quick! March! Um, because I like the uniform. That's a bit of a funny question. No, I drifted into it. Um, but once I got into it, I decided I liked it. It's exciting. You're doing something. <laughs> Essentially, what the army does, or the regimental system does, is it persuades people to put their life on the line for something like the regiment. I don't think soldiers, I mean, even me, the company commander, I don't think I'm, I'm really operating at a sort of high political level. You're doing it for your own people. The company, I mean, the very word company is a, a sound like a judgment in Bishop Man, um, is a sort of a word of comradeship, togetherness, in a common cause. I think it's rather a good word, company. The Prince of Wales is company, that's even better. Major Crispin Black is 34 and an old boy of Harrow Public School. He's been in the army for 15 years. Back. Magnificent. Look at them. Gods. Crispin commands the hundred men who make up the Prince of Wales Company in the Welsh Guards, all of whom are supposed to be over six foot. Just relax here a minute now. Are you very straight? Are you nuts a scratch? Right, that's it. Do you think your officer's mess looks nice? No, it looks like a happy eater. But then I suppose that's what it really is. So. Crispin is English, like most of his fellow officers. Together, they command 600 Welsh guardsmen, whose traditional role is to protect the royal household. Is that that same sort of Peruvian puff, Kate, you had before? This is, um, I am uh, from Peruvian. I'm from I haven't worn my fur coat. The Welsh guards were formed at the height of the First World War, at a time when the army was expanding. King George V was convinced that the Welsh should be part of his household troops. He ordered Lord Kitchener to raise a battalion to be ready for parade on St. David's Day, 1915. <laughs> Eighty years later, and the regiment is coming to the end of a tour of duty in Northern Ireland. I said, well, what happened? He said, one of my jorts had a negligent discharge last night, and I've got a blame. I said, but Alice, that's how it works. It's your fault. For the last two years, the Welsh Guards have been based here in Ballykelly, a huge army camp on the north coast. That's what we do out here. From here, they deploy to trouble spots all over Northern Ireland. Crispin's company is about to go down to the Irish border to protect a police station. There's one with a gun, it follows you. This film was shot 18 months ago, when secret negotiations were already underway that would lead to a ceasefire. 25 years in Northern Ireland has taught the British Army to fight a war in which it was supposed not to take sides. It's a peacekeeping role they find themselves playing increasingly around the world. The fighting British soldier is now forced to follow complex and rigid rules of engagement. Don't be a fucking numpty. There's a lot of discussion about the yellow card. For instance, there were, when a mortar went off, the, when I used to Barrow was mortared, do you remember we had that last time we were down there? The guy, the terrorist, was actually in the vehicle when it went off. He stayed in and then drove away. Now, can you shoot him as he drives away or not? Look at your yellow card. If he's killed or injured someone, yes. If he hasn't, you can't. 
Please, can you take your guardsmen through the yellow card again and make sure its provisions are obeyed? I expect them to take fairly vigorous action if we're under attack. And I will back them up to the shagging hilt. If they act within the spirit and the law of the yellow card, I'll be there in court with them. My collar and tie, making sure they get off. Ready! The key to the thing is going to be keeping your men motivated. I know, I don't want any hard luck stories. I know it's a nightmare. I know we're going to guard a police station for another two or three weeks. The rotation is easier this time. Uh, and I should be much less forgiving to people that are either idle or screw up because nobody should be tired. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Well you done, Mon. I know that's my group in anyway. Oh, you fired at the wrong target. Oh, I fired at the wrong target. Meat. Meat. You both had to fire yeah, again. Yeah, because every time I yet, How many people have actually had to shoot working-wise in Ireland as opposed to training in this lot? Um, what do you mean, though? Have you ever had to use a gun? I mean, against someone? Against someone, no. No, no one's... I think, well, it was about two people have used a gun against someone since we've been out here for two years, and that's it. No one's actually been shot anyone yet. They right? haven't hit them, right? As you can tell, but they're shooting today. Pick up your weapon, Useless. Well, actually, I said that. How are you? Yeah. All right. Pretty early to get up, shall we? Yeah. Delightful. I thought it was only really on 12 o'clock in the day. Um, yes, and it's the fashion in the army to get up early at the moment. I'm, it's uh, five in the morning. Crispin and his second in command, Captain Reese, are leaving ahead of their men, who will follow by helicopter. Two magazines for the uh, pistol. That would be great. For security reasons, the two officers travel in plain clothes and armed. Thank you very much indeed. OK, Wilson, enjoy. Ah, 87. How fine you're looking this morning. Good morning, Corporal Newman. Hello, sir. Why does everything in the army have to have, have, to have a dawn? Travel, <laughs> maybe. Right, and lock the doors, actually. We've got, actually got quite a lot of bullets if you run into trouble, haven't we? Most people in Northern Ireland, most army battalions, will have what is called a tactical area of responsibility, which is a real mouthful, known as a patch. We're the only people that don't have one. Uh, although we live in Ballykelly, we're not responsible for the security of the area around Ballykelly, particularly. <laughs> And we're hired out as the brigade and the province reserve to wherever extra troops of high quality are required. Some parts of the province are out of bounds to us, except when on duty and armed. But you don't go into a red area unless you're armed and with, with a gang of people. That's fair enough. In fact, Cookstown, we're about to go into a red area. Oh. <laughs> Easy Tiger, how are you this morning? Not too bad yourself. I'm looking uh, deeply attractive there. I hope you agree. That. Not at all. Uh, it's okay. You change your mind. What is it about me that looks unpleasant? It's <laughs> Good okay, bye now. We're back. Right, round up the usual suspects. Yes. <laughs> in fact, no, what's that great line in Casablanca? Major Blank is bad. Round up twice the number of usual suspects and tell them the boys are back in town. The Prince of Wales Company have guarded this police station before. It's being reinforced against the IRA's latest weapon, a new high-powered mortar. Their job is to protect not just the policemen inside, but the builders who are working round the clock to make it safe. This is getting more Monty python by the minute. I think he's trying to tunnel in. Yeah. He's knocking down a wall which keeps us alive. Stand by and open the gates for the noble Reese. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame you couldn't get the hill How are you, right? Sticky? Yeah, not so bad. Have you missed me savagely? Hi, <laughs> The company will live inside this compound for a month. No soldiers will be allowed to step outside unless fully armed and on patrol. 
Crispin is taking over from another company of Welsh Guards. It will be the last handover before the compound will be considered mortarproof. How are you? Come, it's major. Hello. How are you? Very well, sir. Good to it's see now. you. How's it been? Good oh, month. Oh, it's been great, sir. Are you looking forward to Bollard. getting back? Brilliant. Or a shithole? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Honey. Looking forward to getting back, or is that a stupid question? A bit of a stupid question, sir. Yeah. Welcome back to Rossley. <laughs> One thing I'll ask you, the new building, keep out of it. It hasn't been handed over until the contract is handed over. Stay out the workman's way. 28 is going to take you straight round to the accommodation. Any questions? No? Good. That is my, my cupboard. Did you rig the light switch up? Um, yes. Otherwise, you have to get out of bed. Turn the light off. Isn't it clever? Aren't yeah. guards officers adaptable? Flexible. <clears throat> lots of detective models. Smith. Need lots of books. The tattler. Just to conform to the stereotype. So anyway, yeah. did you burn it? You didn't. You no. succumbed, didn't you? Yeah. I fucking knew you would. You didn't succumb. No, no, no. You just proposed. Oh, no, no, no. no, I was brave and noble. I was brave. Just dump it in my room. Chris, you made it on the transport. I did indeed. Congratulations. I wasn't left behind. When you last time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was classic. Big Swedes. <laughs> and Matthew, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Everything alright? Yeah, everything's fine. Right. Yeah. What's your first cycle? We're straight out on, on patrol. Okay, I, I want to get you out as soon as possible because we're being protected by a locally raised militia, right. which I don't trust. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we need to get some leaks on the street. Right. I'm sure you would agree. Hotel Zero, this is uh, Hotel 31 Charlie, radio check, over. Hotel 31 Charlie, okay, out. There's an entrance, special port, hi! Every pass here, East Springs, clear, clear, clear. Oh, oh, oh. Come here. Oh, oh, we're Rosley is a tiny nationalist village in the midst of a farming community. It's just 500 yards from the border with the Republic. I might just uh, say a friendly hello to him. Afternoon. Very well, thanks. How are you? The local priest. Yeah, not the uh, the warmest of receptions. But uh, so Crispin Hastings, they're all right. No, no worries. Also, they haven't hasn't changed much. Up the Park Road down yet? Yeah, Park Road, very exciting location, very exciting. Where were you for now? Before that, I was in my room. And where are you going now? We'll probably just wander up the street. There's a gang down there doing the roof but I think that's been completed already. Uh, floating about down there. Mm. It's cool. quiet, isn't it? Ah, I sure. Everybody's really getting pissed. Who is this room that sees violence and engagement in the democratic process must search for a justice
if you were to look down the hill, you can see exactly why nearly 100 men are devoted to the defence of, of this one police station while it's rebuilt. Imagine if you drove a tractor up here uh, with the RA have a Mark 15, big mortar in a gas jar. You could lob it in there, just like a whiz-bang. Uh, it's 100 kilograms of explosive. And if we're in there when it, when it hits, it's good night, Vienna. Uh, that is why these guys you're seeing here now, they're tired, they're wet, they're probably quite pissed off. They're out here day in, day out, 24 hours a day. What will happen once it's been rebuilt? <laughs> They'll probably attack it. Yeah. But at least once it's rebuilt, the, the protection inside it will be enough so that providing you're not standing in the open when it comes over, over the fence, you probably do all right, unless you're really unlucky. At the moment, if they drop one in there now, even on the, on the fortified police building, we'd be fucked, basically. Who pays for the rebuild? The taxpayer. And how much does it cost? Uh, the rebuild, I think each individual station, hmm, I think it's in excess of two million. Keeps you employed, though, Crispin. Keeps me employed? Well, yeah, our male modelling isn't what it was, but I think I could always slip back. Um, do you know, there's one other wo place in the world that I've been to, certainly, where the police stations are like this. Guess, Israel. Funny that, isn't it? I like that. They try. Are you seeing Ross Lay? You know, come in, get a new driving license, have a cup of tea with the police. Those are old days, really. All these soldiers you see here, the guardsmen, are on my flick. I'm responsible for them if they get killed. Therefore, if we roughed up a few people when we came in just to make sure they knew we were here, it's up to me to take the flak for that so that the guys on the ground can be a bit safer. Otherwise, what you want in a democracy is they just want us to sit there and think, nah, such a shame the nationalists don't like us and they want to mortar this police station. You've seen a mortar go off. Why have you now, sir? Yeah. What do you do? Uh, building a factory. You're a builder, yeah? yeah? What's your name, mate? What you've got here is, is simply a fort. Look at it. It's on high ground overlooking the village. It's heavily protected. And you've got, you know, one of the most modern armies in the world living in a fort waiting for the Apaches to come. <laughs> 